Thank you for joining us for this second hour of The World Tonight. I'm Nayara Huck. And I'm Kelly Wright. We begin this hour with a new culture war. The people who brought you January 6th and America's most bitter racial and cultural battles aren't too happy about the National Football League right now. As the city of Los Angeles and the Rams fans get ready for a victory parade tomorrow, a new L.A. Times national poll found that 45 percent of Republicans or those who lean Republican felt the NFL is doing too much to show respect for its black players. When you don't break it down politically, only 22 percent of all who responded felt that way. Only 5 percent of Democrats said the NFL leans too far black. In addition, 52 percent of Republicans said they did not approve of the Rooney Rule, which requires that people of color be interviewed for head coaching jobs and other top positions. Well, as a result, 45 percent of Republicans polled said they're losing interest in the NFL. But I think it's safe to say Brian Flores, the former Miami Dolphins head coach, who is now suing the NFL for discrimination, does not believe the league shows too much respect for black players, not to mention black coaches. Joining us now is Terrence Moore. He's a national sports columnist for Forbes.com and author of the upcoming book, The Real Hank Aaron. Uh, Terrence, knowing that viewership of the Super Bowl went up this last year, what do you take away from this LA Times poll? And for context, it was just conducted the first week of February with about around 7,600 people. Yeah, you know, there's a contradiction here, and we'll get into that here in, in a minute. But first of all, there's no doubt you've got a large segment of Republicans out there, uh, white people, I dare say, who are lo uh, uh, learning, uh, uh, want the days, I should say, of Bronco Nagurski and Red Grange and those guys back then. And, you know, when I was sitting there reading that L.A. Times story, I was in uh, L.A. for the Super Bowl, and, uh, and I saw it, and I started thinking about the week before, I saw one of these Jetsons episodes, Jetsons, that old cartoons from the 1960s. And this particular episode came from 1962, and it was projecting to the future of football. And they had a bunch of robots out there playing and a bunch of robot head coaches or what have you. And yes, they were all white. So it's almost like, you know, they want to go back to the future of that on the one hand. But on the other hand, you got to look at it this way here too. You had that huge halftime performance that we all saw I saw it live with all those rap stars out, th out there from way back when and Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre and what have you. And I want to tell you something. I looked around that stadium. There was a whole lot of old white folks jamming to that. And as we all know, white people buy more rap music than black people. Well, you just broke that down, going all the way from the Jetsons to <laughs> hip hop today. Uh, <laughs> I will just add that hip hop is world renowned. It's it's actually spread the music and the culture of America from the inner cities to to the world. But let's let's break it down. Going all the way back to Colin Kaepernick, which actually sparked some of the protests that we've seen from the right wing media and right wing leaning people, uh, a la the Republican Party. And so perhaps the hip hop generation was too much for them to handle. Uh, during the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, and you, and you talk about uh, Colin Kaepernick. That was back in 2016. And let us not forget that the president at that time, Donald Trump, called all the people who were kneeling, who were black, by the way, SOBs, and got cheered for that. So that was a huge part of it. But then let's, let's go back to something else here. All right? And this, is, this does not get enough play. And th this, to me, what I'm going to say next, explains an awful lot why Brian Flores filed that law lawsuit, the fact that there were so few black coaches in the NFL, just one after last season. Now you got uh, two or we got three now, I guess. Uh, but let, think about this. Back in the fall of 2020, USA Today did this survey. And what they did was they, they looked through the records of uh, political records of those who were giving contributions to, to various campaigns, federal campaigns. And this was for the 2019 2020 time period, and they analyzed the political contributions of something like 200 owners from the National Football League, from Major League Baseball, Major League Soccer, and National Hockey League, all, all across the board, and 86% of those, those donations went to Republicans and Republican causes. 
So this shouldn't be a surprise, all right? A lot of rich people, a lot of rich Republicans, and it starts at the top of the NFL and it goes all the way down. So this is reflecting what we're seeing with this poll. It goes beyond just the fans. It tells you what's going on in, in upper management all the way up to the ownerships. Well, let's take that thread further, right? We have owners. We have Brian Flores and his statement uh, with the civil, uh, the, the lawsuit uh, calling the NFL a plantation. And, and now we hear of a poll in which people think that, uh, you know, there's too much talk about treating players with respect. So that culture definitely harkens back to uh, what we have termed or heard called make America great again, right? All of that, this, the past coming forward, but again, that viewership increasing this time, all those people who were dancing to the music, who were Gen X, millennials, you know, who are now major earners and consumers in American society, is doubling down on the black identity of the NFL actually the way to grow the organization? See, and this is where I say it's a contradiction. I, I, and we all know about polls. Polls lie an awful lot depending on, you know, who's giving the poll, who's averaging the polls. Sometimes people lie to, to, to poll takers. And I say that because besides the, the example I gave when it came to that halftime entertainment, let's go back to 2019. That was the last uh, season in the NFL prior to the pandemic. And the NFL made a record, uh, what was it, $16 billion, okay? So that's a lot of black people and that's a lot of white people, all right? And that's right during the time period when the LA Times said in this survey and it's been this various polls that a lot of people said they were losing interest in the NFL. Well, really? I don't think so. And then you look at the ratings here this year for the Super Bowl, they were up 8% over last year. So that's why I'm saying the contradiction is, is pretty deep here. So yeah, I mean, I understand it from the ownership standpoint because there's all kinds of stats to prove that they're Republican and, uh, and the same with the management and the ownerships and what have you. But when it comes to the fans, Deep down inside, I, I think that they really want their, their teams to, to win and they want to see the National Football League in, in all of its glory, so to speak. Very good point. Terrence Moore, always appreciate you having on having you on this program. Sports contributor for Forbes.com. Make sure you check him out. He also has a book out coming out uh, about Hank Aaron sometime in May. Is that correct? Uh, we look forward yeah, to always having you on to come back and talk about that.